Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I think the RSPO can proudly look back at a lot of achievements over the recent years. Given the complexity of the stakeholders and the supply chains, there has been a very solid progress. I've said in various forums that with all the constraints and very different approaches from all the stakeholders, we can always ask the question whether the glass is half full or half empty on the road of this stakeholder forum to achieve sustainable products. I would strongly vote for the glass is half full option. Cognis, which is now since 2009 part of BSF, the chemical company, has been joining the RSPO in 2004 and has started to address the question of how to develop solutions for the home and personal care market since 2007. One major important issue is that the majority of the oil palm products used to manufacture home and personal care products are based on palm kernel oil, one of the loric oils. These loric oils have quite a different situation for supply and demand to start with. When this industry is considering the transition from conventional palm products to sustainable palm. That is why I'm pleased to say that the RSPO Standing Committee Trade and Traceability has been looking at the complexity of solutions for the home and personal care market this year. And with this, let me outline the agenda for my short talk today. I will start with a view on oils and fats markets in terms of supply and applications. Then I would like to briefly talk about the Loric oil market, which is coconut and palm kernel oil, and its specifics. As item three, I will address the complexity of the home and personal care value chain, which is not only complex regarding the multi-step manufacturing processes, but also with regard to optional raw materials that could be considered to make the major intermediates in this value chain. And I will conclude my presentation with comments regarding the transition from natural to sustainable for this industry. So bear with me for 10 minutes. I will try not to overload you with information while trying to explain something that sometimes even to me seems more difficult than selling refrigerators at the North Pole. When we look at the oils and fats market, supply and applications, it's a fairly easy structure. The supply chain is dominated by palm and soybean oil. The loric oils, which again are mainly coconut and palm kernel oil, are a niche in production. They're relatively small. The general application side for oils and fats is no surprise dominated by food. Products for the chemical industry, here also including the use for soap, are only a smaller share of the total. So in terms of supply and demand, the major raw material and its application for home and personal care products are a niche. And if we look at the specifics of the loric oil market, the impact of the food industry is even smaller. As we can see here, the high value food industry market share is smaller than the share for the oleochemical industry. That is why the RSPO in the beginning was dominated by the needs of the food industry as its obvious major stakeholder on the consumption side. It was not focused on the needs for the home and personal care market. On top of this, the market forces in the Loric oil market as the major raw material for home and personal care applications based on natural oils are quite different due to the, its specific niche character. But what makes Lorix so specific for oleochemicals? The oleochemical industry and the home and personal care product manufacturer will look at oils and fats in terms of what carbon chain assets they contain. And if we look at the sea chain composition of the major loric oils, loric oils are the only one that contain a lot of 12-14 fatty acids. 
All the other major oils contain a majority of 16, 18 fatty acids. But the 12, 14 acids make the products quite unique in terms of their performance as a home and personal care raw material. While this is so far, I hope, fairly easy, now the complication starts. If we look at the products and downstream manufacturing structures, we had lots of discussions among industry representatives of how to visualize this. This is one option. This is a classical oleochemical and downstream derivative flow chart, which is used by BSF to explain the major flows. What it shows well is the fact that many home and personal care ingredients are made from a multi-step process involving treatments and reactions with other chemicals. What it does not really show is that in many cases this is a diverging production, thus taking oils and fats into pieces and using them for different further downstream processes. And what we should also address is that a processor may use multiple raw materials to meet its volatile demand pattern. Also from non-oil palm product sources. And these ratios will change continuously. So let me show you another option of trying to visualize this. I like this one. It's like a spider. This is a slide that was done by Martin Estley from Unilever, who understands also a lot about this. I like this because it reflects even better the optional intermediate and raw material use in the chain. I know now you're about to say, what is he talking about? This is getting too complicated. So let me try to summarize what I think is the simplified message here. The raw material mix between suppliers and even for a single supplier will change. So there's no standard answer with regard to what oil palm product and what percentage of an oil palm product a value chain might contain. There's no classical constant structures. The percentages and compositions will change subject to market forces when participants in this value chain are also trying, trying to address economics. So why is that important? Because in my view it complicates the transition process to physical supply chains. While the ultimate target of full physical transition of value chains, also in this market segment, is not debatable anymore, it makes classical mass balance and segregation approaches economically difficult due to the high extra supply chain and batch cost. It is not so much the sustainable oil premium itself, but the extra batch and inventory cost in diverging multi-step manufacturing process. It is not so much the sustainable price premium itself, but the extra batch and inventory cost in diverging multi-step manufacturing processes that complicate an easy transition. I'm convinced that enough companies along this value chain are committed to target for physical transition. But what this home and personal care product chain needs is as much transparency and communication as possible to start this process. That is why we, as the personal care division of BSF, were very enthusiastic when the RSBO finally enabled market participants of this part of the oil palm downstream product market to start to tackle this subject under the umbrella of an RSBO working committee. The Trade and Traceability subgroup has been, looking, has been starting to look in Q2 2011 to tackle the complexity and build awareness of this transitory challenge. The target was to come up with an easy guide to calculate a potential oil palm product share in this supply chain. If you are a fast-moving consumer good manufacturer, or retailer, or even a processor for this matter. This easy guide for a transitory phase shall be a starting tool 
to enable supply chain participants to have some transparency in a simplified manner, a basis to take a book and claim coverage through the RSPO-approved certificate system Green Palm, while at the same time addressing the target of physical transition in specific supply chains between the individual partners. The EB will look at this easy guide next Friday. We'll probably come up with comments which we as a subgroup will look at as soon as possible and hopefully get an approved version for this easy guide online the RSPO website in Q1 2012 under key documents. So my closing remark here is finally we have started to look at solutions for the home and personal care value chain and we're addressing the challenging complexity. It needs commitment by all industry players in this process, including the plantations and origin industries pro uh, to provide sufficient amounts of mass balance and segregated palm kernel oil to continue the journey of physical transition in home and personal care derivatives. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention.